So we visited Oklahoma City, and we really, really enjoyed it. It's a great town. You probably don't hear too much about it, but I, I had an absolute blast on my trip. In this video here, we're going to show you off some of the smaller things to do in the city, and then take an in-depth look at some of the city's bigger attractions, showing off the Oklahoma City Zoo, the Frontier City theme park, the Cowboy Museum, and my favorite attraction in cities, the best place to eat and drink. So I totally recommend coming to Museum 21C. Uh, it's also a hotel, but there's a a free art exhibit and it's crazy stuff too uh it's, it's weird it's interesting like from tattooed babies to christopher walken they have it all in here guys this room's also weird basketball jesus um, whatever is going on over here this place is weird but it's really cool so i, I really recommend you check it out Guys, things got really weird. We went inside more. There's a free art exhibit, and like Molly's spinning around on the top, like at the city museum. I'm watching a, a video of Obama who flew out of a condom in some sort of a video game. This is nuts. And look at Molly, yo. This is a place, guys. You, you should probably come here. Another very popular thing to do here in Oklahoma City is professional sports. And everyone knows about the Oklahoma City Thunder, the basketball team, but they also have a Dodgers minor league team right here in the center of town and like the biggest minor league stadium I have ever seen. So uh, if you're a sports fan, give you something to do. All right, so if you're looking for something very, very different to do, in the middle of town, they have a conservatory, a big uh, botanical gardens and like a glass dome, very reminiscent of like biodome. Eight bucks to come in, you could probably walk around for between 10 to 15 minutes to ooh, five hours if you love plants. I'm more on the 10 to 15 minute side, but uh, it's uh, really pretty. Let's go take a look around. Here's another look from inside the Botanical Gardens. And it's at different levels too, so it's kind of interesting. As you go up higher, it becomes more like a desert environment. There's also a bridge once you get to the top that goes all the way across. And guys, I can't believe it, right there, it's the eighth wonder of the world, the backside of water. So there's what the conservatory looks like from the outside, and it's pretty, pretty nuts. Um, I will say it costs eight bucks to get in there. I'm not sure if it's worth eight dollars, but uh, to come over here, to come to the outside stuff, it's free. And this is uh, really, really beautiful, right in the middle of downtown. So I, I don't know if I'd recommend paying the eight bucks to go in the conservatory, but uh, coming over here and walking around is really neat. There's turtles and geese, and it's it's very, very pretty. I imagine this is kind of like uh, like Oklahoma City Central Park. Right by the conservatory here, they also have a, uh, a stage area, like a theater in the round kind of thing, where they, I guess they must do some performances. Right next to the conservatory, also, if you got kids, is a carousel. Now I'm going to meet you from something very different. This is the Paseo Arts District side of town and uh, a whole bunch of different art galleries and small shops and restaurants. Uh, we're here doing our first Friday event, so there's music and all the galleries are open and a lot of them have like free snacks, so that's neat. Also got over here, there's a bunch of music around. There's a bus, food truck kind of thing over there. It's a beer bus. You drink, you buy your beer outside and then drink on the bus. Yeah, definitely an interesting section of town. So it is hard to think about the city of Oklahoma City without thinking, of course, the, the tragic bombing that happened here. Mid-90s, was it? 1995. 1995. And uh, this is something like, I, I Molly wanted to come over here. I, I had no need to see this. This is the memorial they built for it. Um, what well, they built is very, very pretty. But uh, for me personally, when I'm on vacation, I like to have fun and see things, you know, go to happy things. And this is, you know, I like to keep the channel very light, too. And this is, this is not that, you know, it's a very kind of somber. Uh, what they built is beautiful, but it's also very sad. Uh, they do have a museum here. Uh, the museum does cost money to go into. The uh, the Memorial Park area here is uh, is free. So uh, if you want to come to visit this section of the town, you, that's kind of what you need to know. Right now I'm coming at you from Bricktown in Oklahoma City, which is kind of like a nightlife area, and it's really, really cool. Very reminiscent of the Riverwalk in San Antonio. And uh, they've got lots of stuff down here. Bars, restaurants. Uh, it's right around where all the ballparks are. You get a boat you could ride, a big mini golf course over there. Um, definitely a cool place to spend an evening. Go on a boat tour, I think it's like 11 bucks. So this is Factory Obscura, 
which is when it opens in September, it's going to be a full like 6,000 square foot immersive art. Uh, they work with Meow Wolf and the Flaming Lips. So if you're familiar with Meow Wolf's stuff, this is what's going to be it's very similar to that. But right now they're opening what they're called Phase One, so you can come here and like play with the boom box that's out here on the street. And it, it does stuff like that as a uh, little cars moving and stuff like that. But uh, I definitely recommend you guys come here because of what's inside. So what they do have right now is the King's Mouth, which is this crazy light and sound experience. You go in and lie down inside this mouth. You could buy these uh, 3D glasses for a uh, dollar. Definitely do that. It makes the experience way nuttier and uh, it's free. So. Uh, this is something to check out. I, I loved it. I thought it was so weird, so different, and it was cool. I mean, look at this thing. Today we're at the Oklahoma City Zoo, the OKC Zoo, and uh, we're gonna have a check out everything the zoo has to offer, from the animals, the exhibits, anything else. I'm the legend, joined as always by Molly. Let's go check out the zoo. So as soon as you enter the zoo, the first thing you're hit with is a uh, kind of this connection of duck ponds. Some big swans in there too. Look at that guy. Let's kick off the tour of the zoo by checking out Sanctuary Asia, the big guy. Uh, I think it's the newest exhibit at the zoo. Look at the baby elephant. Oh, and then uh, some very, very large elephants as well. It's a really nice elephant exhibit they have. It's uh, very big, lots of different areas, and there's a lot of elephants in one area. Here's another shot of that family. There, found out the little guy, uh, Kai, six months old, born in October 2018. So, so tiny. I believe that is probably the sister there that was born in 2014. So uh, kudos to the Oklahoma City Zoo. They're doing a great job of breeding these uh, Asian elephants. And oh man, that's a big animal too. Holy cow. Yaw. They do have a couple of these signs telling you how to like how you tell the elephants apart. And what I really like, they have their favorite enrichment. Like Candula loves giant tractor tires. Whereas Rex really likes splashing in the waterfall. Here's a different side of the elephant enclosure. Uh, absolutely massive. I mean, that elephant looks small because it's so far away. Only two elephants on this side, though. There's that guy with the rear view over there. Always good to see when the elephants get a lot of room. They're, uh, you know, when people talk about, you know, the pros and cons of animals in captivity, one of the most controversial animals is the elephants, and uh, definitely appears here at the Oklahoma City Zoo that they have a lot of room for their elephants. And he's grabbing stuff out of that... Oh, he's grabbing stuff out of that bag. Neat. I believe once or twice a day they do do a presentation with the elephants, probably some training behaviors and that kind of thing, over in this pavilion. And here's a third giant elephant enclosure here. And this one's got tusks. Look at the elephant playing with its enrichment toy. Here is a look at the elephant's indoor home. Uh, very, very modern looking. I got a little bit of a Jurassic Park kind of vibe with <laughs> some of the gates. If you're counting along at home, this is the fourth giant elephant area. No elephants in here, though I believe there's a rhino like all the way on the other side. The elephants aren't the only animal in the Asian sanctuary section. You've also got this cool exhibit with a tanuki. They're really adorable. They're uh, like raccoon dogs. You've also got a couple of uh, above the tanukis. You've got some lang. Uh, man, I forgot the name of these guys. I'll tell you in a moment. And right in front of those, a turtle. I love it. There we go. That's a Francois Langer. There is a Komodo dragon. Posing. 
This big bird is a cassowary. And Molly, what does it remind you of? Kevin. Kevin from Up. Although not quite as colorful. Another one of my favorites at any zoo, the red panda. Unfortunately, this adorable little guy is sleeping. And my camera doesn't want to focus through the fence, but you can see his cute little face. Oh, there is a second red panda. He's sleeping, but sleeping in an adorable pose. The next exhibit is the Oklahoma Trails. I guess it's all animals from Oklahoma. And it's going to be cool. I swear this is my first time ever in Oklahoma. I get to learn about all the wildlife. Look how cute this guy is. It's a swift fox. He is tiny, adorable. There's like a couple of them in here. And look how cute. Oh my gosh. They're tiny. That's like a size of a house cat. Kind of. Over here you have a sleepy bobcat. Very pretty animal. Hey guys, these are some of the stars of the zoo right now. They have three four-month-old mountain lion cubs that were orphaned, couldn't be returned to the wild, and they are adorable. You can see them playing and chasing each other. This <laughs> is climbing on the trees and stuff. Aww. Next exhibit's got a couple white tailed deer. They're like the polar opposite of the super playful uh, mountain lion cubs, as these guys are just very relaxed. But they're very relaxed in a very large area, complete with windmill. Over here, you got a coyote way, way in the back. Oh, he's no longer in the back, he's coming up to the front. A big guy too. He's coming to say hello. He's fast, very fast. And there's a second one. You've got a big Thanksgiving turkey right here, complete with like the, the feathers out. That's really neat. Look at him. He is just posing. In this section you've also got this really pretty aviary where Molly is sharing a pathway with that duck. But it's very, very pretty in here. Next section is in this big, giant barn. Guys, that's a lot of bats. It's like a horror movie level of bats. You got like a, a postcard worthy owl who just turned away. As far as weird looking animals go, they don't, they don't get much stranger than the possum. Look at his eyes. He's got like cartoony eyes. That big tail. So there's a general store that sells really, really weird sodas. Apple pie, key lime pie, coffee cake, buffalo wing, sweet corn, bacon, with or without maple syrup, birthday cake. Oh, goodness gracious. Mustard. Oh. <laughs> cool exhibit here for the prairie dogs. But unfortunately, they've got so many tunnels, they must be all underneath the ground right now. Except for this one cool looking guy. And the one right there. Yep. Oh, and then another one just popped out of a tunnel over here. No, oh, these guys are cool. There's a squirrel up there, too. And they also have a squirrel friend. They do have a bison, which makes sense for an Oklahoma section of the zoo, and it's what a beautiful animal. I, I really wish it was closer, because it's so pretty and gigantic. Oh, what a cool animal. Awesomely gigantic exhibit here with a waterfall for the grizzly bears. We'll go get a closer look over there. Here's a closer look at the grizzly bears. Looks like this guy might be waking up. Or or move it to a different napping position. <laughs> then you got this one. Like, like, he really gives you the idea of how gigantic the uh, the grizzly bear is. I mean, these are humongous creatures. And he's going back to sleep. This is a weird one. Three-toed M Amafuma? Yeah. 
very interesting looking animal. Little tiny arms. I had to turn the camera back on because this is a very, very long animal. Another set of feet in the back. Man, what a strange thing. This is also home to some black bears, and I, I love this guy here. Like, that is a bear that knows how to relax. You got another one over here as well. A bit of a disappointment to me, the otters are sleeping, and the uh, otters are some of my favorite animals. These are American river otters, and I love watching these guys play. They got an awesome uh, lagoon here to play with. So uh, if you catch them awake, it's probably really neat. So there's no animals in this section, but there's a beautiful waterfall. Like, nice spot to get like a picture in front of. And a cool statue of otters. A salute to all nations, but mostly America. And uh, for an eagle too, like ton of room over here for this guy. This is the most room I think I've ever seen at a zoo for an eagle. It's got to be up there with Dolly. I know Dollywood has a lot of room as well for their, their eagles, but this guy, that's a lot of room. Molly really enjoyed this sign about the black bears and how much they would eat. For the average human, would eat four hamburgers a day, which was even kind of pushing it. If you're a black bear, you would eat 50 hamburgers. I also love the clip art of the bear with the giant fork. Got a couple of American alligators right here. And turkey noise from the cage next to them. So there's a stand here that sells chicken and waffles. That sounds amazing. I would totally go for some chicken and waffles, but I do not want to wait in that line. And just when you think a chicken and waffle stand couldn't get any better, they also sell beer. This big giant King Kong type statue welcomes you to the, uh, the ape section of the zoo. Ooh. As a fan of puns, I do enjoy their name of their gorilla area is the Great Escape. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. The gorilla's standing up like he's people. Look how cool that is. There he is. That is a big gorilla, guys. That's a very large animal. Beautiful looking, too. Holy cow. So it's feeding time for the gorillas. They're dropping some pellets and stuff in there. You can see, like, the, the size difference between some of them is crazy. Like the big guy here and this smaller one. Wow, this is awesome. You got this big male gorilla in like full King Kong moment up at the top of his climbing structure. They've got a couple of orangutans. He's gonna move the towel. I think he's getting ready to go to sleep. And then there's one in this swing here you really can't see except for its giant hand. New for 2019 here at the zoo, the orangutans are going to get a new climbing structure. You can see it like half built now. It should be really cool when it's done. Also in the great ape escape, <laughs> the great escape area, as I so much love their pun, is a bunch of chimpanzees as well. The next exhibit is Island Life. So I love going to zoos and seeing animals I've never heard of before. And this guy is definitely one of them. This is a San Esteban Island Chukwala, who can only be found in this one tiny, tiny little Mexican island. How cool is that? And he's hanging out here on top of a rock. So in the Island Life exhibit, you have a lot of smaller aquarium type features like these guys here, the yellow spotted climbing toads, including these guys who are climbing on each other's heads. But a lot of these kind of exhibits, like uh, smaller snakes and lizards and frogs and stuff like that. Here you've got a kookaburra repping his brand. And a couple of ducks and stuff. Nah, I do enjoy the ducks. Interesting design here is there's a tree right in the middle of the building. Outside of the Island Life exhibit, you got a whole bunch of flamingos. Great shot here of the giant Galapagos tortoise right here up against the fence. I'm guessing he must like attention if he hangs up right near the people. 
Yeah, so one more thing about the turtles. I just heard the tram goes by, and one of the turtles is named Miss B, and she is 110 years old. I don't think that's her, but uh, that's pretty crazy. So here's the lion exhibit, and uh, the lions are doing what lions do, and that is sleeping. My many rides on the Kilimanjaro Safari has taught me that they sleep like 20 hours a day. And they look very, very peaceful up there. The enclosure's pretty neat, though. I love the giant rocks. Now you can see the lions posing. It must be in between naps. So one cool thing they have at the zoo, they have like their animal treatment center with a viewing section. So if they're doing any sort of doctor stuff on the animals, you can watch. They've got treatment rooms, you know, radiology x-ray rooms, surgery rooms. It's really neat. They also have like their diet center where they prepare all the food for the animals. So uh, pretty neat uh, back of the house kind of thing that you get to come in here and watch. It's an African painted dog cuddle party. You get a great look at their ears too. And the zebra is right up here near the people. Very pretty animal. Although it does look like there's only one zebra, so that's kind of odd. And it's <laughs> trying to scratch its something. <laughs> here is the okapi. They have three of them. Uh, two in this exhibit, one in a different one. Really, really pretty animals as well. I had to turn the camera back on for the Okapi real quick because he's uh, right up here, super close. And these are normally animals with zoos. Normally they hang out farther back, but this guy, he's right up here next to the pathway. Come on, Dario. Playing with his tongue. Here is the Red River Hog with, with all the mud it could possibly want. Off in the distance over there, you can see a couple giraffes. Kind of weird because giraffes are gigantic animals, but with them being so far away, they don't look quite as big. Another adorable animal, they got the African crusted porcupines all the way sleeping in the back. They have at least three of them. You can sort of see his cute little face. Really, really weird meerkat habitat, but I love this guy hanging out on the log. You can see uh, another one over here playing around. But uh, this guy, he's my favorite. How cool is this? There's just a peacock hanging out. And uh, I guess up next is the Pachyderm building. So we're here in the Pachyderm house, which uh, for some reason doesn't have any Pachyderms, but has ostriches in it. And a lot of ostriches. And it's weird because you don't normally see them in an indoor setting. Um, you can tell this is definitely one of the older buildings at the zoo. Behind you, there's a, a whole bunch of different uh, bird exhibits. They definitely feel older. Some really, really nice birds in there, though. Look at how colorful these guys are. Guys, it's a pygmy hippopotamus going into the water. No. And in it goes. Here's that pygmy hippopotamus again. And I uh, gotta say, the outdoor exhibit they have for him, much, much nicer than the one inside. Uh, it's a lot bigger, looks much nicer, the pool looks a lot nicer. What a funny looking guy. Look at those tusks. This little guy here is a golden lion tamarind, who I believe is easy eating his own feces at this point. And also in here, unfortunately sleeping, is a sloth. Kind of interesting is it, where the guys, if they want to, they can go indoors or outdoors. <laughs> These guys, as the sad sign tells you, is a white naked crane. Another part of this uh, pachyderm house is very interesting because these guys are outside, but you're viewing them from inside. And more birds. Look at the fuzzy alpacas. I'm beginning to think that this used to be the pachyderm house, and now the pachyderms got moved somewhere nicer. I believe that might have been what happened. Interestingly, they still have pachyderm label outside the building, though. Now we got to catch the alpacas outside. Again, much like the hippopotamus, they have way, way more room outside. <laughs> and they're very happy to be outside. I love how fluffy they are. They look like they're stuffed animals. Guys, check out this really cool cornbill. Very, uh, very much reminds me of Zazu from Lion King. And I love his little hop. 
couple of really, really cool cranes here. Uh, very much reminded me of like Kung Fu Panda. But awesome animal. The zoo has a couple of camels, and uh, they do do camel rides. Uh, I guess kind of a controversial topic there. And uh, one thing Molly doesn't like that she just brought up is that all their camels, even though they're not doing camel rides right now, they're all suited up for, you know, camel riding. We should have off. <laughs> I guess they have an aquarium building. Got a couple of California seal lines, I think. That's what these guys are. The underwater viewing. You get to see them swim past. Here he comes. Two times. Whee! So the sea lions we saw, they're part of a show. You need tickets for it. They do it a couple times a day. And the guys we were looking at were not in the show arena. They were in this, this pretty good sized tank over here. You can see them swimming around up top. A small upcharge attraction here at the zoo is Stingray Bay. Go in there, pay a couple bucks, and you could uh, touch stingrays. The front left section of the zoo is kind of like upcharge alley because you got the stingrays, the sea lion show that all costs extra, as well as this lorikeet area. Now there are some tickets you could buy that will include all of these things. Uh, if you buy just the cheap $11 one, it would not include any of this. But if you buy, I think, a $21 or $29 ticket, it will. Um, next is the cat forest. I, I don't think Cody's are technically cats, but they're pretty, pretty adorable little creatures. Also, the cat forest so far, we just passed three exhibits. It's supposed to be home to like a fishing cat, a jaguar, and an ocelot, and there was nothing in any of them. How disappointing, because those, those are really neat animals. This guy here is a caracal. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's sleeping. It's got really cool ears. Barely see him up there, but there's a snow leopard sleeping. This guy is a tayra. Yeah, that's a, uh, got a, I think it's a new zoo animal for me. Apparently it's a member of the weasel family. <laughs> Here's one of Molly's favorite zoo animals. It's the tiger. These guys are Sumatran tigers, and they're sleepy. A little on the smaller side for tigers as well. Got one at the top of the hill napping. Over. Also, a cute pose. Uh, Oklahoma Zoo does have a lot of tigers. This is the fourth one we've seen. The first one we've seen awake. He's looking right at me. Now that's that's kind of scary. If you've been coming to the Oklahoma City Zoo for a while, they have a nice museum all about the history of the zoo. <laughs> it all started with a deer to all sorts of stuff, showing off like a model of an old, like, I'm guessing this is an old, like, ape exhibit. To buffaloes, and I'm guessing it's probably like an old water fountain. Neat. They do have a reptile house that is about a million degrees in here and lots of kids. I'm not sure I'll stay in here very long, but if it, this kind of thing's your bag, uh, there you go. So I love the, the carousels at the zoo because they always have weird animals on it. I think that's a sloth bear and a taper, a baboon. Uh, we got an ostrich, a bunch of elephants, a dolphin. I saw an otter on the other side. You've got an okapi. I think you've got a cassowary. Kevin. The, the Kevin like bird. And also, the location of the castle is really cool right here next to the lake. Yeah, El Capi, a giant crane, more bears. Pretty neat carousel. Oh, and there's the otter. This very pretty section of the zoo is a butterfly garden. Love the uh, trees. Now, I believe it is listed as the OKC Zoo and Botanical Gardens. And you do get some parts of the zoo that are really, really pretty. I mean, it might also be the season we're going. We're here in April. But uh, there's a lot of very pretty tulips and uh, other places. That's weird. I don't really know plants. So the zoo is a bunch of these, and I love these, like the retro Moldomatic. Uh, for three bucks, they make a, a plastic souvenir right in front of you in that press thing. And so that'll do it for our time here at the OKC Zoo. Um, overall, I really enjoyed it. I would say for me, i probably put it in my top 10 zoos in the country, but not in my top five. Uh, some of the big plus, the value you get. The zoo's only $11 to get in, and that's a really, really cheap price for a zoo, and especially one where we came in and we spent four hours. And if you're gonna do some of these shows, like if you're gonna go to some of these presentations or keeper talks, you could probably spend more time than that here. So I really enjoyed that. I love their elephant exhibit. That thing was wonderful. One of the best elephant exhibits out there at any zoo, gigantic. Obviously, the breeding program's going great, so the babies are adorable. And I love the mountain lion cups. Those guys were so, so cute. 
Amelia, what were your thoughts on this place? Um, I agree. The elephant exhibit was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and probably the biggest one that I've ever seen. So, yeah, San Diego's got a really big one as well, but this might be bigger. Yeah, I think this one might be a little bit bigger. Um, my cons, though, is that there is no good pathway. You backtrack a lot. Yes, it's a, you know, you can tell it's an older zoo and just sort of grew because it's, it's not an easy one to walk around in. It's nice that they do have the tram. Yes. Although it is an upcharge, but it's nice because if you uh, have difficulty walking or anything like that. <laughs> and uh, they do have some older, older exhibits yeah. here. Um, things like that pachyderm building, which doesn't feature pachyderms anymore, still is very, very old. But, you know, like all zoos, they have to, you know, build the new and then get rid of the old. Yes. And um, that'll do it for our time. If you're coming to the zoo, you're going to enjoy it. It's a great collection of animals. And they have giant, lots of giant, giant enclosures. Yeah. Like, this zoo had so many big animal enclosures. I had a good time. How's it going, everyone? Not every day I get to go to a new theme park anymore. Today we're in Oklahoma City here at Frontier City. I'm the legend, joined by Molly. We're here on open day of the theme park, and there's an animatronic talking buffalo. Oh my gosh! I had no idea that there was a talking buffalo that was going to welcome you to the park. All right, well, let's go check things out. Let's talk a bit about Wildcat, the park's big wooden roller coaster. And what I think is my favorite roller coaster and ride in this park. Um, pretty long, pretty smooth, because this, this cannot be a new roller coaster. And what I love about it, it goes like back into the woods for a bit, goes over the park's log flume, and uh, not a lot of airtime or anything, but it, it does give it a pretty smooth ride. So I give it a thumbs up. Also, the layout is very, very different. Um, there's parts when you're just high up, because the river rapids are below you, so it, it feels different for a wooden roller coaster. Uh, Molly, what do you think about this one? I agree, it's probably the best ride here. Yeah. I thought it was in really beat you up, and it actually is not too bad. No. And uh, it's got pretty parts. I like the part at the end where it's right before the station, it goes, scoots right across past a couple of fountains. It's a solid ride. Great sign for the mystery little log flume. So let's talk about that mystery river log flume as the boat goes down the big drop here. I, you look at it and you're like, oh, you probably don't get that wet. No, you said that. I said that's not a, a good representation of two adults in that boat. Yep. So you get this kind of thing like if it's like a summer day, this would feel nice. It's like 60 degrees and raining. This was a poor decision. But the log flume was really cool. It starts off with a good like two minute indoor segment. Um, and you go past some like show scenes with no animatronics or anything, but just like uh, maquettes and stuff like that. Well, we have one leg. Oh yes, every single one, skeleton person, they only had one leg. Um, but then you go outside for a bit, it's a really nice log flume. I would say uh, your capacity must be really, really small, so if you're here on a hot day, this thing the lines for it must be nuts. And at least nobody was using these water squirt guns to make my time even worse. How's those jeans, Molly? Oh, it's kind of wet. Ew, kind of not, wet. not a fun time. So the log flume starts in a long, dark tunnel segment. Love any kind of log flume that's got some theming to it. And this one definitely has some, not too, too much, but uh, you got some in the wacky giant pipe just flowing in water. But a couple of very old timey show scene type things. Here goes Steel Lasso, the park's uh, inverted coaster, and it's a Vacoma Junior hanging bang, but it's got the modern train. So, normally you think the Vacoma family coasters are terrible rides, like at King's Island or uh, Legoland, Florida. This one has lap bar only, and really pretty fun ride. Rides much more like the one that's at Fun Spot in Orlando. Good ride for families. I give it a thumbs up. Go through the last turn there. Not a very long ride, obviously. Inside this fake mountain here is Quick Draw, the park's uh, interactive shooting dark ride. Uh, it's an old Sally Corp diary, the same ride in, that's in uh, Myrtle Beach. But uh, this one's in bad shape. I mean, almost none of the effects work, the guns barely work. I don't think there's anything really moved the entire time we went on. So this is a ride that needs a lot, a lot of help. Uh, at least it's inside and not uh, outside in the rain. But, so that's a plus. But uh, yeah, it's in rough shape. I love the sign here at Silver Bullet. 
Hugo Silver Bullet, which is a parts uh, Schwarzkopf looping roller coaster. And that's a, it's a solid ride. I'm not like one of the Schwarzkopf super fanboys, like a lot of coaster people are out there, but I, I did really enjoy it. Fun ride. I love any uh, roller coaster where you go upside down with just the lap bar. I always think that's pretty fun. Interesting ride too, because it definitely looks like it was a traveling fair ride at some point. Not anymore. And it has a tunnel. Alright, so I'm doing a classic scrambler ride called the Sidewinder. Kind of on a lake. Not running today is the uh, Gunslinger, which is a power surge ride. You can see they're doing kind of work on it. Which is fine because this is like my least favorite flat ride anywhere. But I love it. To get into it, you go through two giant guns. That, that's something you don't see every day. Another classic flat ride here called the Casino. I love how it's uh, all themed up to a roulette wheel. Winged Warriors, the flying scooters stretch. It's very much kind of a Native American thing. I love the, uh, the artwork on the scooters themselves. It's really neat. Feels like one of the newer rides here at the park. I'm not sure if it is or not, but uh, it feels a little more modern. That could be totally wrong. It's pretty unique here. To get on Diamondback, the shuttle loop coaster, you actually have to enter through the main gift shop where you enter and leave the park. But unfortunately, this ride's closed today. So here's a better look at the uh, closed Diamondback. Bit bummed this ride's closed. There are, these rides are a good time. There's also not too many of them left. This one actually uh, moved from my old home park of Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey, uh, where well, I never got to ride it there. That was removed in the, the mid 80s. And uh, they're, they're a good time. I also really like how they built theirs, like on top of a hill, so you don't have that far of a walk to get up the tower. If you go on this ride at like a Blackpool Pleasure Beach or Elitch Gardens, you have to climb all those stairs to get up to the top and uh, it kind of shakes and stuff like that. I mean, it is an older ride. This thing was built in the 70s, so I'm not, not shocked at all to see it not operating, but I am disappointed. Fun times. Timbertown here is the park's kids section, and this is where you're seeing a lot of your new for 2019 stuff. Uh, I believe Six Flags is building three, four new rides, something like that, taking a lot of the old stuff out and really bringing it up to date. This is adorable. So you got a little tubs of fun teacups kind of attraction here. A really nice big uh, like playground. Very neat. Let's see what else we can find over here. So you can see uh, some of the construction stuff over here. Obviously a new balloon Ferris wheel is going in. No idea which rides are old and which ones are new, but there's also Bucky's Whistle Stop Depot. A couple more kids rides here, as well as another uh, playground area. I do like all the playground areas for the kids. I think they're supposed to get a kids roller coaster as well. So my favorite part of the kids' area is all these little houses that the kids can wander into. Some of them are two levels, like this one's got stairs. Love the sign for the park's bumper cars. And here are those bumper cars. Pretty, uh, pretty standard stuff. So I have no idea what's going on with these bumper cars, but they are filthy, like everything's covered in dirt. The track, the cars, it's opening day, what's going on? The park is home to a snazzy looking Tilt-A-Whirl. I think it's called Tornado. Now not open today for us is the Renegades Rapids Park River Rapids ride. We're here on opening day, April 6th, so it's a little cold for that. But we saw it from the roller coaster and it looks really neat. Uh, tunnels and you go through like a, a flooded town section. Looks like a pretty solid River Rapids. No idea how wet it gets you or not. But again, uh, theming level here. Love it. Another shot of that Rapids ride. Which uh, I'm sure is already pretty with uh, water running and waterfalls and that kind of thing. I'm sure you're not surprised to learn that the Old West Park does have a train that goes all the way around the park. Some really cool theming in the train station as well. Well, look at that. The fine folks here at Silver Dollar City called up our good buddy, Larry Larson, by one of his famous Larson loopers. Here at Silver Dollar City, it's called Brain Drain. And I'm not normally Silver Dollar City. Where am I? Frontier City. I am yes. I'm getting my old West theme parks confused here. But Brain Train here at Frontier City is a 
Larson Looper. It's actually in a really cool spot. It's a really skinny plot of land. There's not much else you can put there. Except for Larry's greatest creation. So bad news if you're a fan of the rotor like me, they've got one here at the park called the Tumbleweed, but uh, it looks like they boarded up the entrance and exit, so I would have to guess this one might not run again. The, uh, the rotor is a dying breed. I love how they have a Ferris wheel on top of a hill, and then under on the hill is a uh, antique cars and the train goes by, so a really pretty area of the park. Now my favorite segment of these videos, I make Molly drive the antique cars. Oh. The antique cars go around the Ferris wheel. Are your whiskers, when you wake, tougher than a two-bit steak? Try Burma shave? Is that a thing? I sure. I didn't know if that was an ad or just like I some. Think that's an ad. Oh man. Well, uh, Traffic very, jam here, yeah. Yeah, yeah very backed up. Here we go, guys into the Mashburn Pass Tunnel. Molly, when do you stop? Because there's a car in front of me. Oh, I want to go to the Mashburn Pass. It's a very, very short antique car ride. The Mashburn Pass is nothing to write home about, guys. Another theme park staple here. Parks home to a big pirate ship. Frontier City is home to a water park, a very, very small water park. In fact, it only has two elements to it. The first being a tall speed slide structure with three speed slides for more of an adult thrill-seeking base. And the other is this large water fortress with tipping bucket and some western paraphernalia. So if you're coming during the hot summer months and the kids need to cool off, this might be an option for you. Of course the park would have a carousel. Kind of neat. It's kind of up on a hill and overlooks the log plume. So Frontier City is a little weird. You enter and exit the park to this giant uh, cavernous gift shop, which is uh, normally you always exit through the gift shop. Here you do both, enter and exit. Once you exit the gift shop, you're met with this really cool water feature and a very uh, high level of theming for what is now a Six Flags Park. Obviously it wasn't a Six Flags Park, then it was and then it wasn't, but the theming level is really nice. Very cool, and then after you get past some of like the the water features, you're uh, in essentially Frontierland. But there's one thing Molly loves, it's Frontierland. I do, yes. Complete with jails and banks and all that kind of stuff. Very well. Thanks. Yeah, it is. What are the better ones? Mm-hmm. All right, oh, of course, I gotta have old-timey photography. The U.S. Marshal, I like the jail, look at the jail. <laughs> The jail could use an old sad Joe. I'm guessing they don't have an old sad Joe. All right, all sorts of stuff here. A couple little food options, a saloon. I'm really enjoying the theming level so far. So I love this detail. There's actually somebody sleeping in the jail, like a mannequin kind of thing. I think this is the Marshall's post over here. Definitely gives you a Knott's Berry Farm kind of feel. Love that they have street mystery kind of entertainment. Just this guy's wandering around lassoing. This section of the park over here just has like a random train car. Not sure if it's used for anything. Pretty cool section of the park here. Right as you go in, there's big Fort Frontier. And this is that. There's a couple different uh, shops. There's an arcade. There's a big, uh, I guess they do a stage show in here, which is maybe explicitly themed to the 1950s. Uh, there's a bar. That's, you know, very important. You got fully loaded nachos over here. I love the opera house caricatures. They're pretty neat. I do want to show off this, because this is a really cool theater. They do some shows and stuff in here. And uh, it feels very much like you're in a very much Frontierland. I think it's bigger than the one in Frontierland. Sorry, I'm saying Brandon, and I mean Brandon. Brandon. Yes. Pretty snazzy. I mean, any gift shop with a buffalo in it's a good gift shop, right? absolutely love this, the giant chair photo op. More great details over here. Over here you got a sign for Dr. Isaac Yankum, the painless dentist, also the name of Kane's original character in the WWE, a deranged dentist. Hey Molly, what time is it? Beer 30. Beer 30, we're here in Two John's Saloon. 
an old timey saloon. It's wonderfully well themed in here. And uh, they do serve some beer. They got four beers on draft. Nothing too fancy. Bud Light, Amberbach, uh, Shock Top, and something that I forgot Budweiser. Um, beers are eight bucks for a 20 ounce beer, which is not great, but for Six Flags, it That's might be the good. cheapest beer I've seen at Six deal. Flags Park. And I, I do love the saloon. Like, it's a really neat place. And they even have a, sort of like Moe's Tavern has on The Simpsons. They've got like an old timey love tester machine. I love the signage here at this park. Absolutely love these signs in the smoking section. Buyer Sheep says y'all can smoke here. So this is on the side of a snack stand and totally looks like a country bear jamboree guy drinking a Pepsi. Oh, he's got a name. That is Sheriff Bob Wire. Folks, this here's a fine product. Moody's Corn Bunion and Waltz Solve. Only 25 cents. Look at those feet. Molly, what do you think of those feet? Feet, ew. More fun little details here. Wanted, we lived here to see Headshot. $10,000 reward, and it's just me. In this corner of the park, you can get a, some of their upcharge attractions. They do have a Soarin' Eagle zip line. It's $5 per person, which is not bad. Those are pretty fun rides. And you also have Geronimo, which is their Sky Coaster, over there. Not sure how much the Sky Coaster is. Uh, $20 for a single rider. And that's not bad. Uh, for three people, you 12 bucks a person. So that's uh, pretty cheap as far as upcharge stuff goes. This building here, I believe, is the, the old Nightmare Run Mine. It used to be an indoor roller coaster, and uh, now the building is used for haunts during Halloween. I do like how they kept some of the old roller coasters just hanging out right there. So I'm going to assume that this is probably the entrance sign for that old roller coaster. Wouldn't be an Old West Park without a Wild West stunt show. They've got one here in Crack Axle Canyon. Love when parks have a good cheesy stunt show. Guys, here's what the park map looks like. Obviously not a very big park. Your entrance is over here. And then um, there you go. With the water park and the wooden coaster in the back. So they kind of give you a entrance for the water park. Yes, definitely. You exit like it's like through the exit of the Wildcat roller coaster. Very strange. If you are a fan of Midway games, the park does have a bunch of them that you can play. Uh, three to five bucks is the uh, price range on them. The park does have a ton and ton of t-shirts, but if you're a fan of like ride specific t-shirts, you're not going to be in for a good time here at Frontier City. I saw one and it was not, not so hot. <laughs> Guys, I love this shot glass. It says, I got loaded at Frontier City. That's fabulous. Of course, the shot glass is way too small for Molly. Not for. Fear not, Ranger. Frontier City's got you covered, pal. A whole section of booty shorts. Cool sign out here in front of the Wildcat showing off the history of the ride. I was originally located at Fairyland Park in Kansas City, Missouri. Guys, I love this. as a huge door. They've got roller coaster history signs in the line for the Wildcat. Everything talking about from ice slides to uh, design the first wheeled roller coaster and then some of the famous roller coasters. So we got Lightning Racer, a great Adam House coaster from, uh, actually, I don't know if he was with them back then, but uh, Lightning Racer, great GCI, Shivering Timbers, and Michigan's Adventures, and then more Birthplace of the Coaster, the Bobsled Coaster, and then it just goes into all the famous ones. So you Crystal Beach Cyclone, of course you've got to have the Coney Island Cyclone, Elite the Dips, which I think is supposed to reopen this year, uh, Flying Turns at Canobles, that is a, something else. You know, Judge Rory Scream, I'm, I'm not sure it belongs on everything else on the list. You got the Beast, of course. I bet you're wearing a Beast shirt today. So that's appropriate. Boulder Dash is fantastic. Uh, the Racer, obviously a rather historic coaster at Kings Island. American Eagle at Great America. I gotta say, they've got one I've never even heard of. I've never heard of Montezuma in Brazil. Or this one in Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> A turd of a ride that was Son of Beast. Phoenix is awesome. Hades 360, I've been on Hades, have not been on 360. Obviously, New Texas Giant is fantastic. Oh, wow, going to the, the High Five Coaster in China. Balder at Leesburg is what I definitely want to get on. Leesburg, uh, Lees, the Switzerland trip is one on the hit list. Not this year, but it's on the hit list. Uh, Zingo at Bell's Amusement Park in Tulsa. Never heard of it. Didn't even know there was an amusement park in Tulsa. Maybe it's not there anymore. Uh, El Toro, one of my favorites. Right next to my absolute favorite wooden roller coaster, The Voyage at Holiday World. 
What else do we got? I guess a lot of stuff native to Oklahoma, which is cool, no longer here. Like the tornado, the Big Dipper. I uh, love Goliath of Great America. And Outlaw Run, we just read that again back in November. As a huge dork, I absolutely love this. Now, Molly probably hates it because so many people have passed this in line as I've been talking yeah, coaster I nerd stuff. Yeah, uh, most of these. Yeah. I actually uh, question the fact. Oh. Yeah. All right, Molly, where should we go next? I know. Spin the wheel of destiny. Uh. Uh. And we are going to the bumper cars. <laughs> Well guys, that'll do it for our time here at Frontier City. See, I got the name right this time, huh? You did, you did, I'm proud. All Never right, so that'll do it. It's a, it's a very interesting, it's a quaint little park, a little bit weird. Um, some of my favorite things about this park were just like the small things, like this guy here. This sign that says, you know, uh, we don't walk in your bed, please don't walk in ours. Like, to stay out of the grass and stuff like that. It's a very quaint, very charming little place. Um, as far as rides go, nearly not a ride park. Uh, the day we were here, there were only three roller coasters, and none of them were anything to write home about. The wooden roller coaster, the Wildcat, was definitely my favorite out of that group. I don't know why they're blaring rap music in the park. That doesn't fit the Frontier theme at all. Um, I like the log flume. Log flume was neat. Oh, I love the log flume. Yeah. You don't see many, like, indoor sections on log flumes. Yeah. I love that. And I, I wish we would have went on now, when it's, you know, nice and sunny out, instead of when it was raining and cold. That was a... That was a poor decision. Um, but yeah, one thing I will say, this park has a lot of shows, and that's something you never really see at a Six Flags park. And we're here on an opening day, and they're running probably five or six different shows. That was my one bummer, that, that we had some inclement weather, so we didn't get to see their uh, cheesy old-timey stunt show. And I, I love me a good cheesy old-timey stunt show. Um, any other thoughts on the park, Molly? Um, I love the detail. Like, yes. there's a lot of details. It's way better themed than I thought it would be. There's an animatronic buffalo that greets you when you get here. I do love that, yes. I love where the Ferris wheel is located. Yeah, like on a hill, you get a great view of the whole park. And even like downtown Oklahoma City. Yeah. However, old-timey cars. Old-timey cars, not great. Dark ride, not great. Um, one of your four roller coasters being closed are all, you know, kind of negatives there. But I love the theming. Yeah, the, the way better than I thought. Oh it was yeah, the clean theme. park too. Yep. Well, you're, except for those bumper cars. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it really it, it does not feel. Obviously, it hasn't not been a Six Flags park very long, but it does not feel like a Six Flags park. I will say the um, the park doesn't have a lot of room to expand, so I can't see Six Flags doing too much. I would assume they'll probably get upgrades as far as like uh, flat rides. I think it, they'll probably get a lot of like marketable flat rides. Like, yeah. I'd be shocked if the next year or two they we do not see like a star flyer going in here and things like that. But overall, if you're in Oklahoma City, I would definitely recommend coming out here, especially if you're a Six Flags member. It wouldn't cost you anything. I, I probably wouldn't fly here from across the country like we did. But uh, we've had a lot of fun in Oklahoma City. Like, be sure to watch the other videos because this is the town's been a lot more fun than I thought it would be. And uh, you know, from the food to the drinking to some of the other attractions were really nice. The zoo, the, uh, the cowboy museum, there's some really cool stuff here. Hey, what's going on everyone? We're coming at you from a very different attraction here. I'm the legend joined as always by Molly, and we are at River Sport Adventures here in Oklahoma City, which is all sorts of, it's really hard to describe, like an outdoor entertainment kind of adventure facility, home to zip lines, a ropes course, river rafting, the gym of the future, and more. I'm gonna take you guys around and show you what's up. Now the biggest part of the River Sports Adventures over here is of course the river section. So this is a man-made rapids. Uh, I guess not too dissimilar to like a river rapids ride at the theme park, except way more intense. And they do a whole bunch of stuff over here. Uh, right now they're training for like professional slalom whitewater kayaking, which I didn't even know was a thing until today. But uh, you could do this on a river raft or a kayak. And this is something, you sign that waiver and the general public can do it. Uh, this would be something I'd be really interested in, but our flight is literally in two hours and ten minutes, which reminds me, Molly, we really need to check in. We should. And uh, so I cannot get a change of clothes in time, but uh, it's pretty awesome. I, I would have loved to do, like, the, the whitewater rafting. And they do have, uh, you know, two different channels. They're just wild. And they told me that later on at night they do, uh, they turn the rapids down, and everyone goes down in the inner tubes, and that sounds awesome as well. Uh, it's super, super unique. Uh, it's pretty wild looking. Oh man, guys, I love this. So to get to the river rafting experience, 
your raft goes up a conveyor system. That's so neat. So let's talk about what was my favorite part of this experience, and this is these high-speed slides. They're built by the guys over at Wiegand, and uh, they're pretty nuts. The top of that structure there, it's 80 feet tall, so these two <laughs> slides are 80 feet tall. Um, that spiral one, that was a very good slide, very fast. Got really cool visuals because you could see out of it, and that one was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I could say I didn't care too much for what is this crazy looking pipeline one. You didn't go quite as fast. I got stuck. <laughs> yeah, I got stuck too, and it kind of gave me like a claustrophobia kind of feeling, which is something I normally don't have. And then these guys were by far my favorite. They are insanely steep racing slides that are uh, pretty terrifying for, as far as slides go. This, But this is actually probably, as far as slides, I, I, it's a weird thing to compare. This is like the best slides I think I've ever been on in my life, these super steep ones. Molly, uh, not a fan. I'm not a fan of body slides at 90 degrees, and that's yeah, pretty much what you it felt is. like it was a very similar to a water park, but uh, I'll show you how steep this is in a minute. But these slides, uh, all the slides here were a lot of fun. Well, not that one, but uh, the other two. I like the spider. Yeah. There you see how just how steep those slides are, like, so fast, and they actually have like covers on top, not unlike a you know a water slide, to make sure you're staying the slide. Now, time to talk about that ropes course. It is, uh, I think there's five different stories in there, tons and tons of obstacles, and uh, one thing that makes this more freaky, like there's a, a very large one at the Mall of America, but this one since you are outside and it, you can see like the wind blowing. It is, it is much, much freakier to be up there. Also, some of these obstacles are very challenging. Like, you got that guy there, which is just kind of two ropes, and both of them were a little loose, so it was pretty freaky. As you get higher up, the first three levels have uh, uh, two different sets of obstacles, and then once you get to the higher levels, it is only one set. But as far as ropes courses go, I, I, I think this is the best one I've ever seen. A uh, one add-on you could do is the zip line, which is at the very, very top that takes you all the way across the river. And then you switch and you come back. Uh, guys, gotta tell you, completely honest, I chickened out. I got up there, I was belted in, and I could not do it. I could not jump off the ledge. It was uh, pretty embarrassing. I'm not, not great with heights, as you've known in some of these videos in the past. And uh, well, that struck again. And I don't like heights at all. Yeah, once you so saw once me not go, yeah. Up, I was like, nope, I'm not even <laughs> yeah. buckled in. Oh man, uh, a crazy visual from up there though. So I'm sure if you're not a... F and it looks fun. Or terrifying. Well, I, uh, if you're terrified of heights, it looks scary. Yeah. Uh, just like the visual walking off the edge there. Now, if you are, uh, want to look for the scariest way to get off of the ropes course, there is the rumble drop, which you get hooked into that flywheel there and you just jump off the edge. And it's a controlled descent that would land you right there. Uh, no chance, not at all. No, not doing that. If I couldn't do that nice happy zip line, I'm definitely not doing the rumble drop. <laughs> There's nothing I think in the world Molly would love to do less than that jump off the building thing. Except, like except for maybe like the- I don't like yeah. <laughs> Now part of your pass here would also include the option to kayak or stand up paddleboard here on the river. You do have a small mini golf course here, really designed for the little ones. So in this wacky looking building here, it is a, uh, a gym, like you could buy a, 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 it's like a fitness center, but it's really crazy. We went in there earlier, I didn't have my camera with me, but they have like a, it's a, a rowing training facility for, you know, Olympic athletes and stuff like that, but anybody could buy it. So they have like water treadmills and rowing water treadmills. They also had a high altitude simulator, which is a room that simulates being at like 10,000 feet in the air. So if you're like an Olympian training for an, uh, something in Denver here in Oklahoma, you could get that kind of feeling. So it was like uh, the gym of the future. It's really crazy. This is a lot of fun too. This is a uh, uh, two people compete against each other on trampoline basketball. So that's interesting. You also got some water kind of stuff, as well as a uh, spider climb for smaller kids. They do also have a very nice area for the uh, the smaller age kids that might not be able to do that ropes course. They've got this giant like jumping thing, a uh, smaller zip line, a kids sky trail course. So uh, if you get little ones, it's pretty neat too. For smaller kids, you do have some other activities over here, like a turbo bungee kind of system, as well as a uh, rock wall. They do have a, uh, looks like a skate park over there as well. 
people here aren't the only ones that can stay in shape down here at the Boathouse District. They also have like a, a doggy play park complete with agility stuff. Uh, actually, my mom is really into that, so uh, she'd be a fan. So it is uh, $5 to park your car. So when you're planning your visit, when make you... sure you know that. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, that'll do it for our time here at River Sports Adventure. Uh, a really, really unique attraction. Like, we travel a lot, and this is a very, very different. Uh, you want to do it, prices range between, I think it's like $20 and $60. So uh, definitely a little bit on the higher end for attractions here in Oklahoma City. Uh, full disclosure, we were given our passes today. So uh, take that for what it's will. But we still, I think that's, we gave a pretty honest review there. Oh, yeah, no, it was really, really neat. Mm -hmm. uh, something I would definitely check out. Yeah, uh, if I ever come back to Oklahoma City, I definitely want to do that river rafting. Also, you can sort of see here that that river just goes on for a long, long ways. Anyway, if you're uh, coming to Oklahoma City, I would definitely recommend taking this place out. It is something else. Something very different on the channel today. We are at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum here in Oklahoma City. Uh, the lobby area is awesome. We've got this giant, probably 20 foot statue. Not really sure what this museum has to offer, but we're gonna check it out. Let's kick off the tour of the trip to Prosperity Junction, which is uh, really, really neat. It's uh, done up as a turn of the century cattle town. And uh, it's, it's fantastic. It very much feels like a, you know, a theme park style setting. You start here in the stable. There you are, Lewis. And they do have things like this, like audio cues that play to tell you a story of whatever kind of building you're in. And then you end up in the town. And you, it's all, most of these buildings you can walk into too and see like, this one's got a whole bunch of historical saddles in it. And then the American Railway. And it, it's big. Like it's a little dark in here, so the camera might not be able to focus on some of the stuff, but it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it feels very theme parky, or um, a kind of a mix between theme parky and like Colonial Williamsburg. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that came to mind for me was the old Great Movie Ride, and like, and now the Old West. But uh, that's kind of a shot of the main town there. It's uh, it's really really well done. It's very impressive. This, uh, another thing, like this must have been so expensive. This is not, not cheap stuff. So you got the, the telegraph office over here, right next to a big uh, train car. And there's just like a shot of the town. Very, very cool. You walk through like, different shops and stuff. Uh, you like this, don't you, Molly? I do. Yeah, you were taking all sorts of pictures? Yeah, it's very, very different. Yes, uh, not what I was expecting coming in here. Of course, the stable on the right. Unfortunately, not a working saloon on the left. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be cool. You would've got a couple extra bucks out of me. Oh, I gotta show you one of my favorite details in here, in the saloon. Not only do they have like a cool audio track of like a bartender talking to a patron, but they've got a buffalo wearing a hat. It's a good year. You had trouble finding enough grazing land? I sure am. U.S. Marshal's office. There's a jail back there as well. A photo studio. It is uh, quite the place. Really, really well done. Very, very impressive. And you got a couple other things over here at the end of Prosperity Junction. We got a church, a schoolhouse, a bank. Love the bank. If you sat and listened to like all the audio loops, you could probably be in here for quite some time. Anyway, that is the town of Prosperity Junction. Very, very cool. Um, was not expecting something like this when we walked into this museum, and it's, it's a winner. Got another giant statue here of a cougar right before you go into the exhibits. The next exhibit's all about the rodeo and making a rodeo and the history of a rodeo. And uh, the exhibit's are really well done. Like this is not like, you know, you think a bland, typical museum. This is uh, very much, they must have hired somebody very good at the theme to do this. The next exhibit is all about uh, Western movies. It's neat. So this is really neat in the uh, the Western movie area. They play a silver screen cowboys film every 15 minutes in Wending the West. 
and it's in a uh, movie theater here. Dude, chairs and everything. It's cool. Also, a good place for you to sit down for a bit. It's an exhibit all about cowboys and cowboy hats and saddles and buckaroos. Now, that is a chandelier. So, we're now in a section all about ranching and all the different types of barbed wire. And to get to the barbed wire, to see what they look like, you pull them out of a cabinet. That's very different. We've got an exhibit here all about the bison with a heavy, heavy influence on Rumble, the mascot for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, Molly is. Loving some of these vignettes that are being played. In the history of like Buffalo in America and the, the Buffalo Bills. Nobody circles the window it's like the Buffalo Bills. A couple of exhibits here. The uh, Museum of the Frontier West. A lot of Native American stuff. And then you come in here and the next room's all about uh, completely disconnected, like militaries and things like that. And the Calvary of the West. I love how everything's set up with like a, you're in, you pretty much step on a porch. An exhibit all about hunting in the American West, and hunting is not my thing. It's a lovely room of death, as East Ventura would say. So we now entered what I think is a Native American gallery. This headdress is crazy looking. A whole bunch of, apparently Squeaky said come there. Um, but you got a lot of uh, interesting costumes and things like that in here. Look at this thing here. I mean, that is uh, something else. If you would have guessed a woman's wedding outfit, you're correct. You've got a very large section of the museum here dedicated to the art of the Old West. <laughs> Neat photo op here where you get to take your picture with Marianne, who we saw yesterday at the zoo. And now it's going to look like Molly is standing right there next to her. Once I zoom in. See? Buffalo. The camera, the, 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 the camera, the shot on the camera doesn't really work, but it should look like this. Huh? That doesn't work. <laughs> and wrapping it up near uh, sad Abraham Lincoln sitting on an anvil. Yeah, that'll do it for the museum. Overall, it's, um, it's really one of those museums, if you read everything and do everything, you could be in here for all day, probably multiple days. Uh, for me, I, I really like the theming level. The Prosperity Junction section was awesome, and uh, a couple of the exhibits were really, really well done. Uh, this is really my thing. I did learn some stuff, so that was neat. But uh, it was also very new and very modern. I've been to some museums where it's just uh, very old and dated and boring. This was felt like a very modern museum, and was very, very well done, especially for being only like 12 bucks to get into. Molly, what did you think? I really liked the video of the mascot. That yes. was hilarious. The, Watch the it. mascot was uh, trying to find his spot in the museum and causing chaos as he wandered around. It was great. There we go. That's the mature adult <laughs> Molly who wanted to come here. Her favorite part, a video about the bison mascot. <laughs> anyway. So one of my favorite things to do when I'm on vacation is to try some unique food items at great local restaurants and then check out bar scenes, see what kind of unique and awesome bars and drinks I could find in the towns. And that's exactly what we did here in Oklahoma City. I'm the legend from In The Loop and these are the best places to eat and drink in Oklahoma City. First up on the food tour, getting an Oklahoma City classic, the Onion Burger. Uh, we stopped here at Tucker's. All right, so here we are inside. Got a burger and fries, the single cheeseburger with the, the fried onions and stuff on there. Looks uh, pretty delicious. That runs you about six bucks. Fries are about three dollars or so, two seventy-five. Uh, Molly, you want to grab a taste? It looks a little messy to eat. Now I, I'm a plain Jane kind of guy. I don't like a whole lot of stuff on my burger, so I got a plain, but you can get a lot of stuff on there. Uh, they're cooked, made to order. So be sure to wait like five, very ten fresh. minutes for your burger. Very, very fresh. Very good. Very, very good. All right. Get to start off with a winner. We love finding barbecue whenever we travel, and in Oklahoma City, we were told to go to Backdoor Barbecue. So here's what it looks like on the inside. You get your selection of smoked meats, and they have a lot, like stuff I haven't seen in a lot of barbecue places. Like they have pork belly, bologna, portobello mushrooms. They've also got ribs, and they got some burgers and stuff as well. We went. We're going to try a couple other meats. 
I had to get the pork belly. Like I love pork belly, so there's a big giant piece of pork belly. And then the brisket also looks amazing. So they're both really good. I would say I probably like the pork belly a little bit better, but I'm a pork belly guy and I'm a brisket guy as well. But the pork belly is uh, probably my favorite. One thing I love about this restaurant, every table has six bottles of barbecue sauce on it. So a nightmare for Muldoon, but a, a wonderful thing for all of the rest of us. Classic, sweet, espresso, hot, extra hot, mustard. So a lot of different types of sauces and very tasty meats. The next stop is the Empire Slice House. So here's what the uh, the menu looks like here at the Empire Slice House. Under appetizers, garlic knots. The one I wanted, but they, they don't do after 10 p.m. is, of course, as a WB fan, the Andre the Giant Meatball. So sad we missed out on that. Salads, lunch specials. Piece about a slice, probably a good deal. Uh, $3.75. That's what I think we should have done if we were sober. But what we went for is one of their specialty pizzas between two of us, and they all have a hilarious names. Fat Tony, Rocksteady. That's what we went for. The notorious PIG pepperoni, house Italian sausage, bacon capricol, Canadian bacon, a whole pound of pig. But that's not where the uh, the puns end. MCA, Dougie Fresh, Uncle Buck. Teflon, Don, Fungus Among Us, Evil Empire, Drozilla, Foghorn Leghorn, <laughs> Brussels Westbrook, Ghostface Killa, Figgy Stardust, and more. We'll leave it for that notorious PIG. See how this turns out. Also, uh, we got some draft beers. I got the uh, F5 IPA from Coop Brewing. Molly, what'd you get? Molly is too drunk to remember what she got. But uh, I my drink from Pond Tornado Max. The F5 Tornado is the finger of God, so that is what I got. Well, Molly and I ordered way too much food. That's Molly. That's the pizza we ordered. It smells amazing. So do the hand thing one more time. Uh, it smells amazing, but it is way too big. So we have dug in a bit to our pizza here, and um, well, the toppings, the toppings taste amazing. The sauce, the crust, the pizza, kind of nothing special. Giant though. Yeah, very large, but nothing special. The toppings, amazing. Time for a little taste of Americana here at uh, Ann's Chicken Fry House. Guys, gonna take a quick look at the menu here. Very classic. Uh, they got daily specials. Molly ordered the uh, fried chicken strips and waffle. Uh, there's chicken and waffles, fried chicken. I would want a lunch special of chicken fried steak. It seems like it's gonna come with a million items. And a uh, really fun menu. Everything's pretty cheap. And uh, it sounds pretty delicious. So here's what the food looks like. I got that chicken fried steak. Uh, it's really cool. It's like going back in time here. Came with Texas toast and all these chicken and waffles over here. That waffle looks good. So I love my dish. This gravy is amazing. It's so delicious. And that uh, Texas toast is good. Molly, how's your chicken and waffles? It's really good. Um, I love the honey that they give you. You're a fan of like honey on biscuits mm -hmm. or uh, you know sopapillas and things like that. When I saw them bring out honey, I'm like, oh, Molly is going to absolutely yeah, love this. Yeah, it's really good. Gravy. So they have some really cool, very Americana decor. And as a huge theme park dork, I had to point out this vintage Walt Disney World lunchbox. Twenty thousand leagues on the bottom. Mickey Riding Casey Jr., Monorail, Contemporary, Donald. Quick thing to note about this restaurant, they do not accept credit cards, so bring cash. It is time for some dessert, and we're going to Arbuckle Mountain's Fried Pies. Fried Pies. Look at this selection of pies. Cherry, coconut, chocolate, thunder, apple, blackberry, coconut, blueberry and cream. Gotta say, their logo is just adorable. So here's what they look like. They kind of look like giant pierogies. Um, they're not hot either, they're cold. I'm very intrigued. So a little correction there. Molly's pie, the fruit pie, is hot. Mine, the cream pie, is not. 
The pie's pretty decent. I think the, the apple pie's better than, with the hot, than my uh, kind of chocolate pudding kind of pie. Kind of reminiscent of like a like a McDonald's uh, apple pie. So kind of what it reminded me of. Yeah. What did you think, Molly? It was really good. I liked the, the apple pie. So the next restaurant looks like it's in a house, but it combines two things I quite enjoy, chicken and beer. Make a look at the menu here. It's big on wings boneless or bone-in, and a really interesting selection of sauces, like barbecue honey red curry, root beer barbecue, I think we're going to go bourbon teriyaki, and then uh, some interesting other stuff too, like uh, wonton chips, very neat menu, waffles, kimchi beef slider, and a really nice Oklahoma draft beer list. So here are those wings, um, really, really tasty, they're not like covered in sauce, but you, you get enough flavor there, and they're really, really good. I quite enjoyed it. I can't wait to eat the rest. I can't wait to eat the rest, was what I wanted to say. Up next, we're at the Hertz Donut Company. Look at these donuts. They look incredible. I love the names, too. Uh, it's, so, it's so hard to tell which one to get. Look at those birthday cake ones. Uh, the Fred Flintstone with the fruity pebbles on it. AT with Reese's Pieces. Uh, cosmic Brownie. J Jesus? Oh my. These are definitely winners. I, I have no idea what I'm going to get. Ooh, look at Cookie Monster. Cotton I love Bavarian cream. Banana, strawberry. Oh, look at the cereal killer. After what was easily the hardest food decision on the trip so far, we went with the cereal killer loaded with just the marshmallow parts of Lucky Charms. Gotta say, we stand by our decision. Donut is super soft, the chocolate's really, really nice, and then I love the marshmallows on top. Time to get some breakfast seats this time, and we're going to check out the Honey Bunny Biscuit Company. And uh, biscuits are one of Molly's favorite foods. It is. All right, so I went with the classic, just a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. It looks nice with a side of tots. Molly got the winner, Cannonball, which has like a big fried chicken thing on it, gravy. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. So mine's really good. I, I quite enjoyed it. The bacon, it's really, really nice quality bacon. But Molly has the winner. Uh, this is the happiest I've seen you the entire trip, I think. It's like my favorite food I've eaten the entire trip. Yeah. Um, not too expensive either. Like all this stuff, the two sandwiches, the milk, orange juice, tater tots, like 26 bucks. The next food stop is Texadelphia. So here's our drink here at Texadelphia as we wait for our cheese steak. It's a adult cherry limeade. It's a vodka, cherry, and lemonade, or limeade, limeade. It's got gummies on it. But how does it taste? We'll ask Molly, who's ignoring the video to be on Facebook. Not bad, it doesn't taste boozy. Oh, but I like boozy. Didn't even you know there's tasty. booze in it. So we got to, we're gonna share a Texican, no jalapenos, neither one of us like jalapenos. So it's a Philly cheese, I think it's provolone, there's onions in there, but then there's queso. That you're supposed to pour all over it, and now it's super messy. And we have no napkins because we planned for it there. It also is served with chips and salsa. So it's pretty tasty. The cheese steak is very, very good. But I think our favorite thing, like they have a like a, a, a toppings bar, and one of them was salsa ranch, which is really delicious with the chips. But overall, thumbs up. Like everything's very tasty. Very good. So there's a lot of types of food you can have here in Oklahoma City. There's, you know, the super fancy food. There's, you know, the blue collar food. And then there's the drunk food. And we got reached out to by none other than Wiener Up, one of the big drunk foods here. They operate like Fridays and Saturdays in Bricktown. And we're going to eat a foot long chili cheese bacon wrapped hot dog here. It looks delicious. It looks gigantic. 
I just want, I mean, anything wrapped in bacon could be cool by me, but. That is it. Like, thankfully there's two of us. There's no way. Like, even if I was like sad drunk me that like crashed out of the bars, I don't think I could eat an entire foot long bacon wrapped hot dog. It's really good with the ratio and the hot dog and the cheese and the chili. How's the bacon? The bacon's what the I was really good. excited for. Okay. All right, anyway, that's what we're meeting up. Let's kick off the drinking portion of this video by going to the rooftop bar at the Ambassador Hotel. Next up, we're at O Bar, which is really cool. It's here on the, the top of the Ambassador Hotel. It's a rooftop bar with indoor and outdoor sections. You get this amazing view of uh, Oklahoma City. Like, that's really neat. There's, uh, we're hanging out inside, and the prices are not too crazy here. You get a fancy cocktail list that's around 10 bucks. We are drinking the Revolver Bourbon Coffee Liqueur and Orange Bitters. Really kind of a weird uh, uh, bourbon martini style drink. Mm -hmm. And then they have a really nice uh, beer list with local beers. And the beers for, you know, the kind of experience you're getting up here, I would expect it to be a lot more expensive. It is not. They're like five or six bucks for local beers. So that's not too bad at all. And the, the view is really neat. Here's a quick look at what that out outdoor section looks like. Also drinking that $2 beer this time. Really nice day out here. So in August, we're headed to Germany. Let's uh, find out a little bit what that's going to be like here at Fassler Hall. So here we are inside drinking some giant beers. Molly, uh, show the comparison. That's Molly. That's the beer. It's gigantic. Um, so the beer prices are actually pretty good. You get that giant liter of beer, about 14, 12 bucks. Molly is drinking the beer of the month, so it's only uh, 10 bucks for a liter. But they got a really cool menu in here. Uh, sausages, a brunch menu, pretzels, snacks. Really cool. And you get, you know, your giant long tables, very very German beer garden -y games outside. Really neat place. So they also feature Sausage Party Mondays where all sausages are half price. Excludes the sausage sampler. So apparently there's a bowling alley downstairs. So not only do they have one, but it's like a really, really cool like retro bowling alley. Uh, for our buddy Clay, they got points of PBR for like three bucks. And they got the most interesting man in the world on the wall. So it's a pretty cool place down here. Up next, time to check out a dive bar. What we've heard is dive bar, and it is the flea. You know it's a dive bar when there's a random porta potty across the street, which Molly hopes is not the only bathroom. So everyone, this bar is actually really neat. They got tons of bar games, like giant shuffle puck. Like this is the biggest shuffle puck I've ever seen. Foosball, giant connect four. They've got a pool table. And it's just weird, like they got like bowling alley seats, all sorts of like wacky decor, a, a good beer list. I'm drinking a $3 good ass beer, darts, and then they have just a whole bunch of board games over here. So if you want to play like Nick Seen It, Factor Crap, you know, all sorts of stuff, like some bar. So this bar has like lots of cool signs, but by far the best one is this ET Chorus sign. Guys, it continues to get better. There's a there's a disco bar ball with a tarantula kind of guy on it. It's awesome. So as we were on our way to our next bar, we found uh, Mary Eddie's here at Hotel 21C, which is like an artsy hotel. And they have this crazy sculpture here right next to a bar and a restaurant over there that serves pizzas with like two and a half foot tall penguins at the table. Like this is a weird place, but uh, it's pretty neat. So guys, the next bar we're supposed to go to is the Sunshine Laundry Cleaners Drive-In Service. Uh, Google Maps, I don't know what you're doing here. So there's a much smaller sign for where we're going, the Stone Cloud Blurring, which I believe took over for that laundry place. But that sign's awesome, so they kept it up. So we came in right before last call here at Stone Cloud, so we're gonna chug a couple really small beers real quick. First of all, I love that you could do a four ounce four for like two bucks on any of their beers so you can sample a lot of their stuff. So we're gonna try uh, five of them for about 10 bucks. So good deal, cool place. 
next up, more microbrew reaction. This time checking out Twisted Spike. So here's the inside. They got about 20 beers on draft. And uh, you can have four ounce samples like we're drinking for like two, three bucks. And uh, we've had most of them by now. Molly, what's your favorite? Um, it was the Golden Spike. Uh, for me, I definitely like their, uh, they had a Belgian quad called the Holy Beer that was my favorite. But I've liked a lot. And I also love to get these tiny beers and try a whole bunch of different stuff. Next bar up has this really awesome neon sign. We're going to the Bunker Club. The light's very bright. Here's our cocktail. Awesome cocktail bar in here. <laughs> so here's a list. A whole bunch of like team drinks towards like the 50s and stuff. It's very bright, so I'm not going to do this very long. But uh, I'm drinking a JFK avocado and cube rum lime Palerno, a three mile island iced tea, painkiller on tap. Uh, Molly, which one do you? Oh, yeah, you got the Dr. Strange Love. Yeah. And I was very intrigued because it had mermaid involved, and we were like, what is that? It's right there. That's the mermaid. Anyway, the bar is uh, really neat. A lot of old timey TVs. Cool in here. Next bar is Tapworks Ale House. So out of the places we've been to, this has the best beer list out there. Look at how many taps this place has. It is bonkers. Like, here's their beer list, but that's not all. It's double-sided. If you're a beer fan, you gotta recommend this place. A really neat place to drink here right on the canal is the Corkinet Winery. Uh, they do free wine samples, so we went in there, we've got three samples for free. The wine was really good, and I'm not a wine person. I really like all of them, the yeah. white, red, and sweet. Yeah, then you could buy bottles or glasses of the ones you like. It was really pretty neat. Guys, there's no way I'm going to walk by this without stopping. Now it's time for some Riverside drinking here in Bricktown. We stopped at the Tipsy Tiki. We're drinking some big tiki mugs. Uh, I'm drinking a watermelon punch in this big red one here. Uh, which came out of a jug. I don't really recommend it. Does not taste like booze at all. Molly got a real drink and coming in this giant mug. I also really like their glassware here. You get drinks in like giant tiki mugs or uh, pineapples, coconuts, things like that. But their menu is not, it's not tiki bar. It's also weird. They just played Alan Jackson a little yeah, pretty. Their, uh, <laughs> their, their, their glassware is tiki, but their, uh, their drink menu and their music is not. <laughs> Another bar, why not? Hudson's Public House this time. So here's what the inside looks like. A really good place to watch the game. They do pump in the sound, which is really nice. We're here doing the final four. And also we're here doing happy hour and the drinks are cheap. Molly's drinking a $2 Coors. We're drinking a $2 PBR and a $3 shot of Fireball. Time to check out another brewery. This time it's the Bricktown Brewery. So it's another brewery. This one does not do any like sampler or smaller sizes. So you get a big beer. But I really like mine. I'm drinking a... Blue's Berry Ale. Molly's drinking a Willie's One-Eyed Wheat. I like the berry one better, I think. I'm definitely liking the berry They also one have better. like two floors, and the second floor is just drinking. The first floor is packed. We're on the second floor. And it's cool. Up next on our drinking tour is Crab Town. You might be wondering, like, crab? Why are you going to Crab Town to drink? Well, apparently they have a Mardi Gras bar with $5 hurricanes and Mai Tais. Crabtown. Coming at you from inside Crabtown, where we got some uh, $5 Hurricanes that, well, kind of taste like $5 Hurricanes. They uh, definitely came out of a jug in portions of it. They're definitely not Pat O'Brien's. Yeah, they're, they're not Pat O's. Uh, I'm still a little bit bummed there. I will say, like, other parts of this port are awesome. Like, oh, it's a full restaurant. Like, fried turkeys, it was great. Crazy chandelier. I love their logo. Look at that logo. Let me zoom in. Focus. There it is. Crab attacking a town. And then there's like other weird stuff like this giant bird cage. I mean, that's. I don't even know what that is. And that's Crab Town. Next up is Whiskey Chicks Cocktail Kitchen. So, um. My drink comes on fire. That's fun. So here are our cocktails. I got a red rum, which kind of tastes like a hurricane. Molly got a Ramos Gin Fizz, which has like egg whites in it. Which you don't taste the egg whites at all, but it, it, it lends to the creaminess. Yeah. Uh, the bar itself, really cool. 
known for live music. They have a live band playing at like 9.30. We're here a little bit earlier in the night. But then the big thing, like, look at that whiskey and bourbon list. Like, that is definitely lives up to the hype for somebody who has whiskey in their name of their bar. So if you're a whiskey drinker in Oklahoma City, you might want to come here. Next bar is one of my favorite type of bars. I'm uh, going to hit up Michael Murphy's Dueling Piano. So let's talk about this piano bar a little bit. It was really fantastic. The show element was amazing. They had four different performers that would rotate in between two different pianos as well as a percussion drum set. And they played really, really great music. They sounded fantastic. And it wasn't like your average piano bar either. They played a whole bunch of weird songs, stuff I've never heard in piano bars before. And I've been to my fair share, and this was just really good. One downside, this was one of the more expensive bars on the trip. There was a $10 cover charge per person. And uh, the, the beer is going to run you about five or six bucks. I would definitely go to beer. The one liquor drink I had was very, very weak. So if you're coming here, stick to beer and uh, get ready to pay. But, I mean, the show is totally worth it. it. This was some of the most fun I've had on the entire trip. So up next is one of my favorite types of bars, Flashback Retro Pub, which is an arcade bar. So, guys, I love this place. It is an arcade bar. So once you buy a drink, all the games are on free play. They have a, a ton of signature drinks, a ton of games. And uh, so we're drinking, let's see, what are we drinking? Molly, you got a ring pop, mm -hmm. which came with a ring pop. Fantastic. Uh, I'm drinking a drink called Beetlejuice, but like, look at the names of their drink. It's fantastic. There's Fueler, Flux Feather. I almost ordered a Moonwalker, which is the name of Michael Jackson's video game. I almost Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink, and uh, they've got a lot of cool stuff here. I'll show you the video games in a bit. I so love the games here. First of all, they have a classic NES setup over here where you can play like Super Mario or Duck Hunt. X-Men. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles side-scroller game. Love that. Captain America and the Avengers. The Simpsons. Like over here you have like, like four side-scrolling games in a row for four players. Now like I um I was born in 85, so I grew up like with my mom taking me to the, the mall and like Oh man, I really wish we could go to the arcade back when, you know, they're both malls and arcades and then playing games like these. So like, this place is totally in my uh, my wheelhouse of stuff, especially with a wrestling game. We played this for a while, WrestleFest. And if you look at these guys, like, this was even before Undertaker. It's that old of a wrestling video game, also not very good. But uh, man, they have so much. These are not really side scroll games, these are more one-person games. Dig Dug and stuff like that. Kung Fu Master. Marvel's Capcom, probably one of the more modern games they have here. Uh, Frogger, Robocop, Mario Brothers, all sorts of stuff. Let's see what we got. Donkey Kong Jr. This I love. It's broken, but NFL Blitz is wonderful. Pac Man, Mrs. Pac Man, man and wife next to each other. The Galaga games. Then you come to my favorite game in the entire arcade, right here. Burger time. This is something like when I used to go to Disney Quest back in Orlando. This was my favorite thing to do at Disney Quest. And they have it here on free play, and I absolutely love it. So I love, so, as a huge nerd, I love some of the details behind the bar here. You've got an Alf figure, Yoda, a whole bunch of VHS tapes, etch a sketch, the license plate from Back to the Future, this wonderful Lionel Richie sign. Uh, like, ah, uh, the details are. Fantastic at this bar. If you're a huge nerd like me, possibly born sometime in the mid 80s. And the beer selection is awesome too. Those are uh, all beers. So they also have a number of signature shots here Nerds, Ninja Turtles, Strawberry Shortcake, Darth Vader, Garbage Pail Kids, Hushar JR, Bubble Double. Molly's gonna do the, what do you, the nerd shot. Nerd. So she's going to take that shot and then show the whole box of nerds. Good luck. Very sweet shot. It's very, very sweet. Now the entire box of nerds. What was better, the shots and the nerds for the whole thing? I'm in a sugar rush now. <laughs> So at the urinal, you could pee on the Golden State Warriors. 
A couple more to run through. Spider-Man, Tekken 2, Tetris, Track and Field, Rampage. I played Centipede for a while. Love some of the murals and stuff like that. Scrabble, Rampage, uh, Mortal Kombat. I love the Simpsons tribute wall. You gotta stay away from these guys playing Giant Jenga. Centipede Street Fighter 2 is the classic of the classic arcade fighting game for me. You got a couple stuff that's closed over here. And then in the back, this is not open right now. I don't know why this isn't turned on, but as a, you know, a super big Disney dork in the, the user section, I need to show you that they have a Fix-It Felix Jr. from Wreck-It Ralph. And like, I never even know that they, they may be like commercially available. It was like something that was at Disney Quest and uh, resorts around Disney World and Disneyland, but they have one of them here. How cool is that? Bringing things full circle here as they have a Tucker's onion burger in the airport. So we got one last bite before leaving town. All right, Molly, that'll do it for our food and beverage video. What was your favorite? I'm guessing I know where you're going with this. It's gonna be the biscuit. Yeah. The biscuit place, oh, amazing. Um, so good. For me, I really like the uh, the Tucker's onion burgers. Yeah, no, this is my second. And that chicken fried steak I had was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Also love the drunk food, a uh, foot long bacon wrapped chili cheese dog. When yeah, you're that was pretty, really good. Pretty tanked at midnight is very fantastic. And the chicken beer, I love how they deep fried it twice. Yeah. It had a nice crunch. Now as far as drinking goes, uh, we went to three breweries. Which one was your favorite? Uh, Twisted Spike. I agree. I think I agree with you there. It had a, uh, different beers that I've never mm -hmm. tried before. Let's see. Uh, very different. Favorite drink of the trip, like cocktail-wise? Mm. For me, it was that thing I had at the Bunker Bar, the, the, yeah, avo no, that would be the it. avocado yeah. and rum and falernum. Yeah. That definitely. was my favorite. Uh, favorite bar? <laughs> Tough um, question. We went to, I tap, feel like a million. The tap, what was it called? Tap works with all the beers yeah. on draft. That was my favorite. I, for there me, so many selections. I think for me it was the dueling pianos because that, yeah. that entertainment level in there was so good. Yeah, I they mean, were that, amazing. That bar was expensive, but the quality of entertainment in there was fantastic. But a really good drink in town. Like I had so much fun. Everything from, you know, great food too. Yeah, the, the dive bar, the fleet dive bar, the arcade bar, mm -hmm. uh, rooftop bar, that, that German beer hall. Mm -hmm. Like so many cool places to drink. Uh, so we're coming to Oklahoma City. Hopefully this uh, helped you plan your eating and drinking adventures. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section below. I'm gonna finish an onion burger before hopping on my the plane here with a hangover. <laughs> it's been a tough morning.